Hi everyone. Um, I posted a video a few days ago uh, unboxing this uh, new Kenobi hilt that I received from Roman Props. Um, this is known as the MK1 Inception mashup, but a lot of people in the community are just referring to it simply as Buried Hope. Uh, but whatever it is, it's the uh, hilt that's based on the Disney Plus Kenobi series. Um, which is very slightly different to the uh, original prop that was used in Revenge of the Sith. It's sort of a halfway between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Uh, so I'm just going to go over this in a little bit more detail than in the last video and just show you what I did, the steps I did to weather it and make it look a little bit more accurate to the hero prop. Um, I've just got this in the back here. This is the Inception Elite, also from Roman Props, just for reference and comparison. Um, once again, this is accurate to um, Revenge of the Sith, and the one in front is accurate to the Kenobi series. So the main difference between the two is going to be the emitter. Uh, the emitter for the new one uh, resembles the A New Hope version. It's It's got a slightly different shape, uh, so I'll just bring them closer to compare. Just put the two right next to each other. You can immediately see that there's a difference in the design, uh, the size, and obviously the finish. The Revenge of the Sith is a much shinier chrome with these kind of sharp angle uh, edges. Whereas the Kenobi one, or the MK1 emitter, which is used on the A New Hope prop, it's just got softer edges here, like steps that are a little bit more angled and it's obviously much more weathered. Uh, it's got that gunmetal black look. From the front, they're both vented. or well, not vented. Uh, well, that one is sort of vented. That's just the blade plug that come with it. Uh, the blade plug for the Inception looks different. So that's really the main difference to tell the two apart is the emitter, because this uses an MK1 emitter. Whereas the, the rest of the body is more or less an inception. That's, and that's how Roman designed it. He just took MK1 emitters and took the bodies of the inception. He put them together. Um, and then for the future runs, which he's doing now, he's just redesigned the whole thing based on that. Um, moving down the neck. So first of all, I did a little bit of weathering here. If you've seen my unboxing video, uh, this was a full sort of black, uh, just a one single color, but I just looked at some uh, reference pictures from the uh, Kenobi series and I noticed that there's almost like a, a gradual few shades of gray in there. So it goes a bit lighter to medium to darker and then again lighter, medium, dark again. So I just um, sanded it down slightly in places just to give it a slightly more interesting look. Uh, to match the uh, show. Most of the weathering I did was on this section here, the neck and the wind vane. Um, so I sanded all this down at the bottom and then applied some brass black in places. So I sanded down right down to the bare brass in parts of it and just applied some brass black. I'll try to zoom in so you can see even the base of it. I've made it nice and dark uh, over here, same thing again. And that more or less matches the uh, prop that we see in the Kenobi series. Whereas obviously compare it to the Revenge of the Sith, everything's much more shiny and clean and brand new. There's just a nice polished brass and copper finish with a real shiny look and no weathering whatsoever. Here in the middle of the ring there, of the wind vane, I again sanded down to brass and put some brass black that binds it quite nicely. And I did a little bit more there in the base because I saw that in the uh, reference pictures, the base of the neck is actually black. Whether it's paint or what, I don't know, but I tried it with black paint at first and I wasn't crazy about how it looked. It just looked fake. Uh, so I sanded it down with some uh, fine grit sandpaper, uh, revealed the brass underneath the copper coating, 
and then uh, just touch up with brass black and that blends in much more naturally with the rest of the copper. So it looks like it's just kind of tarnished over time. And I think that's, that looks pretty good compared to, you can easily, easily tell the two apart now. Even if, you, even if you ignore the emitter and you just look at the necks, you can clearly see which one is which. The grenade fortunately came pre-weathered by Roman, so I didn't touch it. All I did was just add a little bit of um, weathering powder in between the grooves. This is some Tamiya uh, snow and rust, just to give it a little bit more dusty. It's very subtle and you won't see it from far away. It's one of those things where if you zoom into it, you, you'll spot it. But also what it does is if you look at it from far away, you can immediately see it's just overall less shiny. And that's because of the dusting in between the grooves. And so that's the reason I did it, just to make it look a bit more aged. Uh, the clamp section and greebies are identical, and the clamp card. I did not touch this one. I may pull this back down a little bit. I'm not decided yet. I may just very lightly sand it down with some scotch Bright, just to take down the, uh, the shiny chrome effect and make it look slightly more matte or dull. I don't know. I'm not decided yet. I think I need to see... Uh, what the prop looks like. I might watch the show again and pause it for some stills to see whether it's shiny or is it dull. The booster is the same as the grenade. It came pre-weathered. So again, just a little bit of um, weathering powder in between the grooves. That's it. Just to make it look a bit more uh, dusty. And the pommel is exactly the same. I've left it untouched for now. Again, this I may dull down later or add some weathering, it depends. I don't really have a lot of reference pictures yet. I'm still kind of collecting them. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly show an overview of um, what it looks like at the moment. I'm quite happy with it for now. Um, so I've got the episode three version, the Kenobi version, and I've also got the MK1, which is the uh, new look, which looks completely different. Uh, but it's nice to have like a full set of what is canonically the exact same hilt, but it appears slightly different in each of the three iterations. Uh, well, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick review and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. May the force be with you.